Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Water, and I'm here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey, Scott. How are you? Doing fantastic, my friend. Happy New Year to you again. Yeah. Happy New Year to all of you new listeners. Hop it on the fasting train to launch for 2023. So we are excited about today's conversation. We started last year off in a similar fashion, and we're going to bring you some of the most common questions we get about fasting and kind of being on your fasting journey, some of the things that come up along the way, but also some big picture perspective on what does maintenance look like? How do I get started again? What happens when I lose that activation energy and the the shiny newness of the new plan fades away, much like those New Year's resolutions or gym memberships? So we got a fun episode for you today. Welcome into the OGs as well. Appreciate y'all continuing to follow us on this fasting journey. And man, we have an incredible year coming up for y'all this year with new resources. I'll touch on that in just a second because we did promise you one this week and mm-hmm. it will be next week because we've had a delay in, in production, <laughs> but we want to make sure it's perfect. So yeah, it is coming. Stay tuned. This year, so many new things, so many, you know, diving into new research, some, some new resources, challenges all on deck for this year to support you on your health and weight loss journey through the tried and true art of fasting. So welcome in new and old. We are pumped to be here with you in 2023, Tommy. So beginning with the end in mind, big picture, where we Mm want to go throughout this year, we want to go over some of the questions or threads or conversation threads that we've been having over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want to start beginning with the end in mind. This is something that we say often. Sure. And The question was framed in a way that said, what do I do with maintenance modifications since I'm at maintenance when it comes to the fasting lifestyle? So do I need to learn to eat at or near my caloric requirements? Mm -hmm. I haven't been tracking for a while, but I'm pretty sure that eating that much or getting that much food within a shorter, you know, one meal a day type situation isn't probably going to be sustainable. And you're right. So should I try for a nutrition window? Should I focus on food quality, timing? Do I move my schedule Mm. week to week? What does that maintenance picture look like? And the application of this is going to be a little bit different for everybody. But in the big picture, setting a weight loss goal, especially this time of year, and we're going to wrap the episode up with some actionable things you can do to make sure that you're going to keep the progress going. But beginning with the end in mind of, okay, you have your weight loss goal in mind, Mm -hmm. you have maintenance in mind. So what is that ideal day or that ideal kind of fasting lifestyle look like when you've achieved it? Not if, but when. Yeah. And I think that's what Jill was speaking to here was like, well, I'm at maintenance, but like, this feels weird. Like, do I keep doing the things I was doing? And the reality is, and this is what I want to unpack, is the habits that she's built to get to maintenance are the same habits that's going to continue for her to maintain those changes, which is, you know, big picture. That's what we want. We want sustainable weight loss. You know, the stats say otherwise that you can lose it, but you can't keep it. Sure. Well, there's no point in making all the money if you can't keep it. Right. No point in losing all the weight and getting the health if you keep losing it. Yeah. Is like those foundational habits that she used to achieve her goal are the same habits she's going to use to achieve. To, to maintain it, but applied mm. in a different way. Wow. There's a lot to unpack here. First, let me give a shout out. Congrats, Jill, for the work that you've been putting in consistently. We've noticed over the over the past months, you know, during 2022. So it's, it's incredible. But 
I also want to want to make sure to highlight the fact that when we embark, whether we have 10 pounds to go or 20 or 150, either way, I'm going to have to to know and be confident that I can achieve that long term goal. And also that it's going to take some adapting, you know, while I'm going through that journey to kind of take the off ramp to maintenance. So knowing that it's not going to look the exact same as as everything that I did to get there means that I'm already mentally, I've already accepted the fact that it's not going to look the the exact same. Okay. And I, I think that's one of the problems with the 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 fact that we know 95% of people, you know, give the weight back, like end up, you know, kind of kind of giving back that that progress. It's it's very it's difficult to keep it off, but it's not impossible. And success leaves a lot of clues. And, and one of those things is, is understanding that I will have to make some adaptations whenever I get there. So you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so we're building on the last couple of weeks, right? So we talked about, you know, the health benefits of fasting at the end of 2022 and fasting as a lifestyle, give you some basics, some goal setting, looking at the big picture, looking at the long term, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Episode 158, we talked about the launch formula. So intention, consistency, guidance, and reflections from 2022. So that one is really like a, hey, like this is a reset, this is a fresh start, or this is how I get back on track moving forward. And we highlighted all of the most important topics from the from the year that we saw played out inside of our challenges and our communications and our thousands of messages that we get, right? Yeah. So Today, you know, starting with that concept of maintenance, Tommy, like you just said, and seeing that the idea is to keep it once you get it. Yeah. If you're at the beginning of your journey and you're just starting fasting or you're re-engaging in 2023 because the holidays mm-hmm. got you, right? Which sure. which happens. Been there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Raising both hands and feet. Yeah. Audio <laughs> me, you can't see it. But yeah, been there as well. Years past without fasting. Yeah. You know, Jill's success was in applying the basic principles of hitting her fasting windows, her water, her mindset goals, breaking down her big goal into smaller goals, you know, engaging, asking questions, um, you know, stepping outside of the shadows when the fasting police aren't around. You know, she shared that Mm -hmm. in her first month after following last last summer, following, you know, our podcast and in one of our challenges is that she weighed every day in the beginning and she had 15 days that first month where the scale went up. Yeah. And she was like, man, that that was hard. Yeah. Right. Without the right support or the right perspective, then that can be really derailing. Right. So yeah. Demotivating for sure. But the same things that she did, fasting timer, intentionality, and and she, as I outlined the question, right, when we started today talking about it, should I do this? Should I move this? Should I open my window? Should I, what food should I focus on? You know, protein, et cetera, all these different questions. Counting calories, macros. It just, I'm just going back and looking at the list again, right? It's not that she's going to stop fasting or stop caring about what's in her nutrition window or Ooh, stop setting her timer or stop getting her water in or stop focusing on her steps or stop looking at her, her why, which is mm-hmm. to have a happy and healthy retirement, grandkids, family, spouse, all of that stuff. Yeah. But if you, you can't continue to live in a fat loss phase when you finally arrived at maintenance. So there's going to be this feeling out period about how your body responds to more nutrition opportunities. You're going to be making more decisions. You're going to have the need for more intentionality Mm. in a little bit of planning on making sure that you're getting in good nutrient foods and things that you enjoy eating. Yeah. Because if not, you're just going to be like trying to fit a round peg in a square hole or vice versa. I'm terrible with analogies like that. Whatever it is, <laughs> you're going to be trying to squeeze it in when it's like, all right, well, what got me here? But now how do I apply those habits a little bit differently? And you got to give yourself a little bit more time too. Yeah, you can lose yeah. with fasting. You can lose 10 pounds in heck 10 days, but can you keep it off? Right? That's so the tricky part, you get, yeah, you got yeah, to <laughs> give yourself some time. Make a couple of changes, Right. Keep the foundational habits the same, make a couple of changes, and then see how your body responds and how the scale responds over the next, how your energy is, how your focus is, how your libido is, how your brain yeah. <clears throat> brain fog or lack thereof is, you know, and yeah. how, how you're performing on a day-to-day basis. That's that quality of life piece that really comes into maintenance. So as we 
build on the last couple of weeks and like future pace what the next six months or 12 months can look like for you, thinking about what it feels like, what it looks like, and what maintenance actually is for you is an important part of that process. Yeah, I, I love all those points. And I, I feel like a lot of stories that we hear um, from people looking back and, and what they did to try to maintain it, um, a lot of times they tried to change too many things all at the same time, like like thinking maintenance just looked very, very different from from my fat loss phase, but like uh, like going from let's say let's say OMAD or maybe they were doing you know a, a few hours worth of an eating window, um, but some longer fasts in there as well to to give enough time to to tap into those long term fat stores. But then just all of a sudden switching, going okay, I'm at my maintenance goal weight now. I'm going to go to sixteen eight, which which a lot of people will will kind of start with or use for their fasting journey. But but just opening that up, going from from much smaller eating windows all of a sudden to an eight hour eating window. And now, like you said, I have all those decisions to make. And you know, I, I might still have some levels of insulin resistance, even if if the scale is where I want it to be. Right. I, I had it. I was building those for years. It can it can be or I've I've been uh, severely um, carbohydrate restricted too. Right, right. And, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm bringing in all of these other foods over a much longer period. I can I can definitely see the the weight you know tick up more quickly than I was expecting during this. So I, I think not not expanding that window too quickly is is one of the big the big like warnings for you know for going into maintenance. Yeah, and as you're at maintenance, you're probably going to be looking at different metrics too. So you might not mm -hmm. be worried so much about your blood sugar because you've reversed your prediabetes, or you used to be in the hundreds, now you're in the 80s, right? So yeah, you don't have to worry so much about that. But maybe you're looking at some lab metrics or a DEXA scan or body composition or those types of things as well. So those are different skill sets that you're going to learn if you haven't been incorporating them in your last few months of the weight loss phase as well. So good point. just some perspective on beginning with the end in mind and putting some thought to those as well. So I wanna transition into a couple of the other questions, the more like kind of like frequently asked questions type thing. Like, mm -hmm. can I have this? What about this? Can I have flavored water? What are your thoughts on lemon in my water? Can I put creamer in my coffee, et cetera? We also get a very common question where people say, hey, this is TMI, but I have to know. <laughs> okay. And My we always know what's coming next. about yeah. bowel movements. Right. It's okay. always bowel movements. It's, it's always bowel it's okay. movements. It's not TMI, <clears throat> right? No, it's not. So the question came in, I normally go once or twice a day, but since I've been on this program, it's slowed to once every two or three days. I realize that less in equals less out, but a good bowel movement is one of the greatest gifts to seniors. I have no discomfort, just wondering if this is normal. Could this also be the reason that the scale hasn't moved down recently after having some pretty significant results to begin with, some mm -hmm. weight loss results? So this question is kind of twofold. One is, yeah, absolutely right. Less in means less out. Sure. But consistency is the key here meaning consistency in the pattern. So if you've had digestive changes prior to, or digestive issues prior to fasting, in the beginning, you need to be careful with breaking your fast slowly or with a handful of almonds and decreasing your fluid intake so you don't mm -hmm. end up with gastric emptying. Sure. Okay. If you're subject to the opposite effect, so instead of diarrhea, constipation before mm -hmm. fasting, then you might be prone to having some of those similarities, some of those symptoms come up right in the beginning as your body mm -hmm. adapts to the changes in digestive enzymes and your body's cephalic phase of hunger mm -hmm. and, you know, delaying, not denying food and changing the timing. Like your body is very systematized to being ready for a certain amount of food at certain times throughout the day. Sure. Cue hunger or hunger cues. You know what I did there? Yeah. So <laughs> a couple of things you can do on the decreased movement is making sure that you are staying focused on not water, but trace minerals and electrolytes. Mm. That will slow down the motility of your digestive tract and cause a backlog because you don't have the correct environment or the correct balance of electrolytes. As you start to fast, insulin comes down, your electrolytes get flushed out in the process of diuresis where you're peeing a lot. Mm -hmm. If you stay consistent with your concentrates minerals or your Himalayan salt or your Redmond salt, then you should notice that 
the constipation should not be a problem if you're consistent with it from day to day. The second thing mm -hmm. is the concept of magnesium, Tommy, where if you're feeling like you're stuck, then 225 milligrams of magnesium citrate at night before bed could be a game changer. And then the third thing would be making sure that you are putting in fibrous foods into mm -hmm. your eating windows. But you can also use something like psyllium husk, and you can use that at any time. There's really not okay. much to it, but that's yeah. going to help get things moving again if you do end up in the category of being stopped up mm -hmm. and not just having the normal decreased less in equals less out and decreased frequency. Yeah. Can we talk about food quality for a second too? Mm -hmm. Because if you're, if you're, you know, you're, you're taking this seriously, you're, you're taking control of your health. You, you want to see the scale move down. You also want to, you know, take control of the long-term health measures too. You might find yourself making more deliberate, intentional food choices as well. So as you, you come off of some of the processed foods and you're, you're taking in more whole foods, you know, we, we can become a lot more efficient with those and there's a lot less waste that needs to come off of those foods too. That could be a little bit of a new normal where, you know, yeah. percentage, percentage volume of waste is actually coming down because most of what I'm bringing in or more of what I'm bringing in is, is usable substrate for the body, right? That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that, but that's so true. When I did mm. the carnivore, 60 day carnivore yeah, kind of pilot run guinea pig over here, mm -hmm. um, there was definite decrease in yeah, really, in the mass, and I was yeah. like, whoa! Like I hadn't felt this change since when I started fasting, and the weight just started like falling off. Interesting. Back in the day, but yeah, and then we also transitioned our dogs to raw food, and I noticed that like now I don't even have to clean up the yard half the time. Ah, before yeah. with three dogs in a small yard, it was like right. twice a day <laughs> cleaning up the backyard, right? With three kids. <laughs> now they're on raw food, like. There's no fillers. There's no, there's nothing in it. And their, yeah. their coats are better. Their moods are better. So interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I know we're not canines, but as you just said that, I was like, oh yeah, that happened to me with carnivore and oh yeah, for dogs too. So nice. Yep. never TMI. Right. Hydration and salt first. And if you're sensitive, salt can have a laxative effect. So be careful. Mm -hmm. And then depending on which side of the spectrum, often going too often too loose or going not enough and stuck. And then, you know, using magnesium citrate 225 liquid form is better at night. And then you can also do psyllium husk as well as a source of fiber to help things get moving as well. So cool. let's transition into, there's no way to, uh, non-awkward way to transition out of bowel movement conversations <laughs> into the conversation about CGMs and mm -hmm. fasting optimizers. I don't like the word hack mm -hmm. <laughs> because with that comes a negative connotation. Sure. But there are some things that if we are in the blood sugar space and we want, like we talked about at the end of the year and all the episodes we've done on fasting for cardiometabolic health and decreased risk and, you know, eight or nine of the top reasons why people have health issues and their, their life is shortened and they lose their life mm -hmm. here due to disease in this country, they're related to insulin and blood sugar related issues. So if we're putting that at the forefront, then the question comes up about CGMs, which is a continuous glucose monitor. Okay. Yeah. And there's a couple of big companies out there. You can just Google it. It's everywhere. And it's become much more common as the prevalence of prediabetes, diabetes, younger diabetics, um, and uh, not type one, but type two, um, and the expansion of this group of people mm -hmm. where, you know, CGMs is kind of, in, especially in the fasting world, kind of been a, become a household name, right? So, yeah. You're like, oh, continuous glucose. I don't actually know what that is. So the idea here is twofold. One is, do you need something like that? Mm. And the answer that I initially come up with is most likely not. Mm -hmm. If you're a diabetic or a pre-diabetic, then you can go to your doctor and ask. Dexcom 6, Freestyle Libre. It's covered under most insurances. Mm -hmm. um, there might be some cost, but you would be able to get one. And most of them are two-week implant uh, uh, wearables, right? And you can get some pretty cool data on them. If we're going to be beginning with the end in mind and focusing on blood sugar and metabolic health, decreasing cardiometabolic effects and metabolic disease, right, and getting the weight off, yeah. then it's hard to lose weight when our blood sugar is continuously elevated when we're in a high insulinogenic state. Yeah. 
you can't tap impossible. into the it's impossible it's damn near impossible you can't tap yeah. into those long-term fat stores especially if we're talking about considerable decades and considerable um tens of pounds of weight you know 10 yeah. 20 30 40 50 pounds plus yep so a question came in was like hey i was able to talk to my doc about getting one of these do you think i should and then if i do what the heck do i do with it <laughs> right? right and the initial response would be gather some data if what you're doing is working, you're losing weight, you're feeling good, you're at maintenance, right? Get one and gather some data. Do what you've been doing that's working and see how your body responds because your response cannot be, unless you just decide to not open the app or yeah. look at the numbers <laughs> like, and just pretend it doesn't exist, Yeah, your choices and your day-to-day -day routine is going to give you a discernible result that's going to be right there mm. ready to smack you in the face right wow especially if you're tracking your weight along with it right so you can kind of see you how can see some correlations tracking. yeah right yeah and then yeah yep so there's this subcategory here of like okay well what about insert can i have this can i use this should i use acv what about walking what about this that falls into this if you had a cgm it would be really cool to be able to test your individualized response yeah. And my story started with when I had this, when I, when I did two separate 14 day trials with CGMs, I was, I tested things like coffee and come to find out I was having a blood sugar response to coffee due to my HP axis and my adrenals. Black coffee. Black right? coffee. Okay. Yeah. And wow. I was like, oh crap. Well, what else am I doing? That's so I just started <laughs> trying everything. I was like, what about my Zevia in my fasting window? If I had a Zevia and dinner, Mm -hmm. My blood sugar would stay elevated for two, three hours longer than if I just had the dinner without the Zevia. Wow. Talk about so, good information. Right. Under so, the surface, yeah. Yeah, right. So you can look at the research about artificial sweeteners and allulose and stevia and all this different stuff and bulletproof mm -hmm. coffee and, you know, that could be two, 300 calories in a cup. And you're like, well, wait, wait a minute. So if we're beginning with the end in mind and we want to keep fasting as the, as the primary because it's a great weight loss tool, but it's also a great, you know, health tool for maintaining yeah. health over long term, then we need to look at like, well, how would I know if those things are going to serve me? Well, you can try them out and see how you feel. But the next level up would be testing your blood sugar. You don't need a CGM. You can do that with a Keto Mojo, which we have a link yeah. in the show notes. You get a massive discount. We get a couple of bucks off of it, full transparency. But sure. we just partnered with them and they offered it to us. Like we went to them. We're like, hey, our people need you. Like, right. can we, we get a link? <laughs> like, what, what do you need, right? Yeah. So you can you can always use, you know, a keto mojo or a blood a finger prick test as yeah. well, like one of those diabetes machines. You can get one of those at CVS, right? Yeah. Or Walgreens. But the Just idea of the CG it. use it, <laughs> right? The idea of like the CGM said, though is that well, personalization, right? So I know Tommy, you had a few yeah. you want to list off there and go through. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, like morning blood sugar numbers really kind of give me a focal point. That's like one of my habits that that I I practice it's it's part of a a maintenance you know fasting lifestyle practice for me it keeps things top which of which is mind. what periodically checking in um, on your blood like, sugar numbers like checking in like lately especially going into this year I started looking at just the the daily numbers on a consistent basis that I hadn't I hadn't really done you know it was kind of sporadic even for that morning number reading which is so powerful because to see how much of a dawn phenomenon effect that I'm I'm actually going through, you know, in the morning time, I can see a difference, probably about 15 points difference on the blood sugar, yeah. whether I have an earlier dinner window or a later Ooh. dinner window, you know? And so just right there in that, it it makes it a lot less tempting to, you know, kind of push off for a later dinner, which feels a little more relaxing, a little like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd rather be a little bit later. the but family a little bit better maybe. It, on it does. Days. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's quieter. It's a little less stressful. And we get the same question about like, what about alcohol in my, in my eating window, you know? But if, if I, if I take a look at it and I have the eating window and I know if it's later, it's going to be 15 points higher in the, in the morning. I know that's not doing good things adding up over time for my body, for my physiology. So this, the same thing comes in if, if I were to put an alcoholic drink in the window, especially the later that it is, watching what those numbers do, which, you know, you get even more insight on a, in a CGM, but it doesn't, but you can, you can see that kind of stuff, you know, kind of lurking under the surface. So it's, it's feedback that tends to shift my decisions, not in a way that feels like I'm kind of clawing my way through my diet, but more in a way that's like, 
what do I actually want? What, what are my long-term goals? How am I actually feeling? Now I, now I have the data to correctly correlate. My behavioral patterns become, they start serving me more without feeling like I'm fighting through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and some of these other optimizers as well, like, you know, we talk about walks after meals, you know, decreasing postprandial blood sugar by 30%, yeah. the use of apple cider vinegar. We already mentioned bulletproof coffee, how it doesn't kick you out of ketosis, but it definitely breaks the fast. So sure. what's your intention of fasting, right? Creamer in my coffee, Dr. Fung yep. says, you know, That's 50 calories one. or less, or, or maybe it's a mushroom drink that you're now using instead of the usual espresso. Sure. And maybe, you know, we had a question come in, it's got 20 calories, 80% less caffeine, which is good for, for this individual, for Linda. And mm -hmm. I didn't really think about it breaking my fast. I know there's several of these mushroom drinks out there, but like she's doing it for a, a health reason, yeah. right? A, a long-term health benefit. So 20 calories, long-term health benefit. You feel better when you do that. I'd say do it. Don't worry about it breaking your fast, right? right. CGM, yeah. I mean, you could, you could get one and try it out, but I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze on that. Same thing question we got about apple cider vinegar. I hate vinegar was the, the framework, <laughs> yeah. but I really want to use ACV started. to help blunt my blood sugar because mm -hmm. fat loss phase, getting the weight off, right? Yeah. And what things can I do to optimize my progress? Just like if you're a calorie counter, macro tracker, eat less, move more, then mm -hmm. you're going to have like a MyFitnessPal. You're going to have a scale. You're going to have certain tools to yeah. get the result, desired result. So, well, if you hate vinegar, my first thing would be like, well, no, probably not the solution for you, but you could look up some, you know, ACV adrenal cocktails that have like a little bit of orange juice and fresh squeezed orange juice and, you know, mm. ginger and, you know, you could put vitamin C and, you know, other things in it to make it palatable. But then is it yeah. going to blunt the blood sugar spike, which the research shows it's about one ounce of apple cider vinegar prior to a meal can get you, mm. you know, 20, 30, 40% decrease in your blood sugar insulin response yeah. for that meal. So we always answer these questions with the try it out, see how you feel. Did it seem to move the needle? Or is this thing that you want to put into your day-to-day -day routine part of your long-term health plan? And if it is, then go ahead and, you know, put it into your nutrition window or nutrition opportunity. But sometimes if you need to take it in the morning so you can be more regular, so you don't have like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The CGM thread or the blood sugar thread is, yeah, that's important, right? If you're going to be looking at long-term health this year and not just at the scale, then looking at other metrics, my second metric that I would choose, well, I choose it first over the scale because that, that thing will just mess with you because you have an expectation and the time and the reality don't match. So you get frustrated, et cetera. But you know, blood sugar for sure. So if you can get a CGM and you're the type of person that likes to look at things and be like, whoa, like you said, that's going to leverage my decision making. Yeah. Then I say do it. But if not, you can go ahead with a simple finger stick, do, you know, a few weeks, get a baseline and then see how your body responds to some of these optimizers. Lemon and water is another one. Yeah. You know, those types. You already mentioned late meal versus early meal, different ways to break a fast, Tommy, right? There's, there's a big conversation around that as well. Yeah, absolutely. There is. And I like imagine getting the that piece of data from what your blood sugar did with or without the apple cider vinegar. So even like to Linda's point that she hates the vinegar. Well, guess what? If I did, if I took in the same meal at the same time of day. It was Sarah who one, hated the vinegar. Oh, okay. Sarah did. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. If, if, yeah. Give Sarah you know, credit. I'm, I appreciate I, her transparency. <laughs> I'm sure there are more out here listening who, who might hate Me. vinegar too. Yeah. But at the same time, if you, if you did a more controlled test where you did the same meal at the same time of day, took your blood sugar, you know, maybe an hour after that meal with or without the apple cider vinegar. And if you saw a 20 point drop, you know, from one to the other, how much less do you hate vinegar at that point? Can you stomach, can you swallow the, the shot right. of apple cider vinegar? Like is the juice worth the squeeze at that point? Absolutely. Why don't you consider it a prescription for yourself to like get better fasting results and, right. and you know, be able to do more with your fasting. So I really like that. And, and it doesn't have to be necessarily right there when you, when you take that apple cider vinegar, it could be at the beginning or it could be at the end of your meal, depending on, on what you're actually wanting to do with it, but how you actually break your fast is as absolutely something that you can correlate with your with your blood sugar, whether you're using a CGM or a keto mojo or anything else. Right. And how you feel, you know, during during that 
that portion when you broke your fast and how easy is it to stick with your next fast is is really right. important too. So experimenting with a few different things like the almonds that you mentioned or some crunchy raw veggies or something else like that. How to break your fast is something that's gonna gonna take some some experimenting as well. Yeah. So if you're looking to, to potentially blunt the blood sugar spike, then definitely do the ACV 30 minutes before your meal and breaking the fast, prioritizing fat and protein, and then carbohydrates after. So that's the order you should eat for yeah. optimal blood sugar. Now, some people are going to say, well, that didn't work for me. Right. That's the whole point of this kind of nuanced conversation. Right. Is it worth for some to see versus others? Most importantly, as we wrap up this conversation here in a minute, we're going to talk about, well, there's some customization here along the way that you're going to have to figure out or personalization that you're going to have to figure out while adapting this lifestyle. Because we know that 21 days to make a habit is not absolutely true when we're talking about li major lifestyle change or major lifestyle sustainability in those changes. So the 21 days to make a habit, yeah, sure. If you want to add water to your morning routine, yeah, about 21 days, you'll probably get into a good rhythm about you know adding a glass of water before your coffee. But there's a lot more to it, to a complete lifestyle change or adapting a new way of living. So breaking your fast in that order is one of the things that, yeah, you'd get some pretty cool data with a CGM um, or even just blood sugar testing, as we mentioned. And then the resistant, the cold resistant starch is one that's come up this previous year as well, which we found mm -hmm. interesting yeah. where, you know, if you cool your starches overnight and then reheat and eat the cold insulin resistance portion of that starch can, can also reduce the blood sugar spike. So if you are like yeah, that's cool. struggling with carbohydrates, you know, carbohydrates aren't the devil. They're not bad. Certain forms, refined processed carbs, yeah, sugars, fructose, all that kind of stuff, of course, can, you know, increase blood sugar response and slow down fat burning and clog up the liver and, you mm -hmm. know, fructose directly related to NA, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, et cetera high fructose corn syrups, all of that stuff. Yeah. But if you're talking about like natural sources of carbohydrates, especially for women, those are great for hormone building. As you get leaner and your visceral fat comes down, uh, your body's going to want more of those for an energy yeah. supply, right? As you have less stored fat to burn, your body's going to need short-term energy supplies more, yeah, which is- Maintenance needs more of those, right? Yeah, maintenance Which is needs part more. of that, Yeah. what we were talking about earlier. Like, right. it, now, like it's, it's going to look a little different. Right. Now, I'm not saying go burn your grain brain book by Dr. Perlmutter. Of course not. There's a lot of good mm -hmm. information in there. Yeah. But that balance or kind of what that looks like for you. Yeah, there is some cool feedback that you can get in this optimizer. Can I have, should I put this in my window type conversation? And those are the things that we found over the course of a 30, 60, 90 day, six month, year long journey or goal can derail you because you start yeah. getting analysis paralysis. Is this working? Why am I doing it? And you get off track from keeping the main mm -hmm. thing, the main thing, which is fasting timer. Make sure you're getting your trace minerals and salts. Make sure you're you know, making decent decisions during your fasting window. Yeah. Which leads to the last conversation piece for today, Tommy, is a question came in about needing a complete reset, right? Mm. This time of year. So all of you gym goers that are dealing with the lack of access and <laughs> machines and treadmills right now. My wife is just, just talking about that. Just hang day. on because in a couple of weeks, most of the people are going to scatter. Okay. Yeah. It's just the sad reality of the situation. Sure. Okay. So you'll get your favorite treadmill back or your favorite elliptical or your favorite shoulder press machine or your favorite yeah. you know, yoga locker. mat or dumbbell yeah. or, or whatever it is. It's coming. So just, so just stand by. But this, this idea of needing a complete reset. So this person thought they could freelance their way through some stress in the holidays and mm. didn't really self-proclaim, didn't really form any life habits that way. So mm. asks, is there an introductory training to start like day one, including how, like, how do, where do I go? What tools do I use? I need a timer. Like, I don't even have a timer right now. Like the wheels <laughs> fell off. Where do I go? How do I start? I think it's a really cool way to wrap up today's conversation and then leading into next week about four and six hour fasting windows and the new resource, et cetera, Tommy. So mm -hmm. I just love this idea of like, uh, okay, I'm here. I made the decision. It didn't work. Okay. I'm back again. Just, you know, all the folks in the gym, but like, I want to, I love how she says, I want to build some foundational life habits here. Yes. That's what we want to focus on. Right. And I like, I've, I've absolutely been there. My perfectionist brain, very black and white has, has really 
you know, pushed me, you know, towards feeling like, okay, total reset time. Cause it was, for me, it was always like, if my, if my diet was on, I was in the gym. If I was in the gym, my diet was on. If one went off, the other one completely fell off too. So, so just, just identifying with the fact that needing a total reset is like, it can definitely be part of, of the issue. So I'm going to, I'm going to say two things. One is you need to remind yourself that you don't have to change everything in order to be completely moving. You can be completely moving in the right direction. You can take big strides without absolutely changing everything. A few foundational things that you can stick to is, is really where, where the magic happens. Okay. And then the, the other one is that we, we can oftentimes convince ourselves that our, our effort, like how hard it is, it should be correlated with our, our results and how much results we actually see. And, and that's a fallacy as well. So, so keeping those two things in mind, if I make a recommendation, like I still use fast habit every single day, it's a great right. simple app. I think you pay a few dollars for it now. I, I, I was grandfathered when it, when it was free. It's a good one. Life, you want a free simple. one, life app. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's yep. some, it's like, but, but keep it basic. I, I like mm. fast habit because it's very, very basic. Right. So it, it keeps the important stuff in front of me. So right there, I also make sure that I have a big cup for water, like right in front of my coffee maker every morning, because I don't want to start the day with coffee. I want to start the day with hydration. So a, f- a few grains of, you know, pink Himalayan sea salt and some water means that I already made a decision like first thing in the day that this is, this is what I'm doing. This is what's important to me. So there's no doubting it later on in the day. And it's not big. It's not huge. I'm not going to see a difference on the scale tomorrow because of it, but it helps me set the timer and remember why I set the timer. And so it's just foundational for me. But again, the, the effort of it doesn't correlate with my long-term results and sustainability, right? So what I just heard there is setting the intention. So three to five minutes a day, right? You need a mm-hmm. reset. So what I want is for anyone listening to say, all right, maybe you already listened to the first episode of the year and you're like, yeah, I got it. And now you're back going, I need a reset. That's me. Yep. Raising my hand, right? Sure. Been there. Yeah. I remember the first holidays after losing all the weight versus the previous holiday and how absolutely Mm -hmm. different and crazy different it was. And now this last year's holiday seems so like dull and mundane when it came to food and (laughs) celebration because I didn't even have, yeah, I didn't have to think about, you know, where's my big black shirt or how am I going to feel on the drive back from grandma's house? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, man, that next day after Thanksgiving, oof, here we go. Like I'm going to take that day off work, you know, like, (laughs) All of those types of things. So it's crazy. You know, we want to zoom in a little bit of intentionality, perspective, three to five minutes. But the last thing I want to say today, Tommy, is when you were, if you were a faster and or if you were on a weight loss journey previously, make sure you go and reflect because we started this conversation about beginning with the end in mind, what the Mm -hmm. next six months or 12 months can look like for you, right? Beginning with maintenance in mind. Who is that person? What do they do? How do they look? How do they feel? How do they act? So if you've been somewhere on this journey of adapting fasting or weight loss to achieve better health, going back and pulling some of the things that you liked about what you did that worked previously yeah. is a huge like accelerant to the potential of looking at a 50-pound weight loss and being off track for months and needing a reset going, ah, oh, crap, here we go again. Right. This Typical is going to be me. hard. And yep. now that you've said that or you subconsciously believe it, well, yeah, it's going to be because whether you believe you can or you can't, you are right. You're right. So yeah. going back and pulling those things, foundational habits, like you mentioned, pulling those things out that you previously did that were working for you as a lifestyle change that move the needle to get results, making sure that we're pulling just two or three because we typically focus on the negative, right? Like, yeah, it didn't work. This is why. Well, okay, but what did work when it was working? Mm. And that's where we want to go. So we've got a few things for you as we wrap up today's episode. Next week, new resource, Tommy. Um, additional support. You need a place. You need you need to get back on the uh, the fasting train and get off the you know, the struggle bus, let's, yeah. let's go back to the fast start guide. If you have the fast start guide and you've never watched the videos that come with the fast start guide, go get the fast start guide that comes with the mini masterclass and then start mm-hmm. putting OMAD back into your routine. 
And then also we want to invite you to the Fasting for Life community group on Facebook. This yeah. is a place that it is, uh, it is not a uh, one size fits all for fasting. It is a very specific group of individuals that come in looking for support around this type of lifestyle adaptation, our podcast, kind of how we look at things. We wanted a place to go where you know you can come and get the reset, the support, the questions answered, mm -hmm. Tommy. So no final TMI. thoughts. <laughs> yeah, right. And there's no TMI. So final thoughts as we wrap up this episode and continuing the momentum in 2023. Yeah, final thoughts is, is that just like we talked about foundational habits a lot, leveling those up just a little bit or, or going to re-engage with something like the Fast Start Guide, taking 20 minutes, setting them aside to watch the videos that go along with it. That's multiple votes for your subconscious that helps you to make those better decisions in the moment that don't feel like I'm clawing my way uphill. So go do that, take an action, and then guess what? When the new resource drops in about a week, it's going to be sent over to you automatically. You're gonna have more ways to level up those foundational habits like very soon, like so as, as soon as it's released. So it's just, we're off on, on like so many yep. of the right tracks for 2023 yep. already. I just, I just love it. Keep leaning into it, yep. you know? And I'll drop this little nugget. Next fasting challenge, February 1st. And by the way, Ooh. it's right around the corner. So yeah. hope to see you on the inside. Tommy, as always, great conversation. Thank you, sir. Head to the show notes, click the link, Fasting for Life community on Facebook. Go get the Fast Start Guide if you haven't gotten the accompanying video series that goes with it. Stay tuned for the resource next week. It's going to be yeah. an incredible year, Tommy. Appreciate the conversation. Appreciate y'all for listening. If you feel so inclined, drop a five-star review. That's the, our favorite yes. kind. To continue to tell the podcast gods that we are doing something good and providing value week to week, sir. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. So, you've heard today's episode, and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter, where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day -day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.